it is going to be Rograt for Marist, and uh, DePaul will be sending in ADR. Now, uh, Rograt, another staple name to this roster, we've seen him play a couple different characters. Typically, I think he, he goes Greninja more often than not, but ADR is one of the most successful Pac-Man players in this league. So that should be an intriguing matchup to say the least here entering game number two. As a reminder uh, to all of the newer viewers watching the way our point system works, you get a point for every stock remaining at the end of the game, and you get two bonus points for winning your set, which is why Maris is up 4 nothing now. They had two one-stock victories and the two points for winning their best of three to take that 4-0 lead, but four points is really the minimum amount of points you can earn in a set, maximum being eight. So four points can be easily made back up. We'll have to see if Maris can extend their lead or if this is DePaul's time to make a comeback. ADR on the Pac-Man and Rograt on the Greninja. Here we go for round number two. Yeah, I've always wanted to see these characters battle it out. Um, I'm not sure exactly how the gameplay is going to come out. I think I'm going to be expecting a lot of uh, typical like Pac-Man flowchart hydrant setups, um, and then probably some similar flowchart gameplay from Greninja. Um, I think what it comes down to is who holds advantage the best. I think when you're a character like Pac-Man, you have certain privileges like the hydrant that you can use it in disadvantage a lot. Um, but at the same time, Greninja kind of has those moves to kind of beat it out. Um, that up smash on the Hydrant being a great example. So we'll see how they kind of navigate around each other's attacks. I like that Shadow Sneak back to back to stage, kind of putting ADR into the edge guard situation. But the parry into Nair, possibly a follow up, does get the forward smash, and ADR takes the first stock. Yeah, that was a great forward smash for sure. Now we're at the corner. Let's see if ADR can get out. All right, good ledge get up. The Shuriken typically covers ledge get up, but I guess that was just good timing. Ooh! Oh, that was clean from Rograt using the, the push from the Hydro to get into range for that forward smash. Rograt answers right back. Yeah, that was a great answer from uh, Rograt. I, I love that perfect usage of like the Hydrant setup. You know, when, when you know things like that, um, that's when you know how to like really counter a character with their own moves. Um, I think it's really important to not only dissect your own character, but also like your opponents. So that way you know some really niche movement options such as that one. Um, that said though, it's still pretty even. Uh, ADR, not gonna let that uh, intimidate them. All right, good falling back here. Oh. <laughs> Great oh. F-Smash kill. <laughs> yep, you're, you're absolutely right. Great F-Smash. I mean, he got caught jabbing the hydrant and couldn't get out in time. And answered right back, though, by that up-smash. So, last stock scenario here once again. We've been seeing a lot of those lately, haven't we? <laughs> I mean, between set number one... And this, I feel like it's gonna be a long day, but a very tense day at that, as both of these players now sitting, uh, well, I was gonna say fairly even, but that quick string from ADR gives him the percent lead, and that's gonna be dangerous. Rograt now kind of sitting at kill percent. That Shadow Sneak, I like his use of it, but it hasn't connected the past two times. He's gotta be careful. That up smash didn't come out, the Nair actually bailed him out of it. And I start taking notice of those shadow sneaks as well. Um, it's, it's one of those moves that you can kind of just throw out when you're in like a sticky position. Um, speaking of sticky position, Rugrat, 
getting stuck in the air, ADR hitting with the Hydrant, and getting that kill. ADR able to take game number one, and uh, I feel like this is just a, an unfortunate circumstance if you're Rograt. First, you see the first hit of Hydrant, then he back airs it, and he's just trying to grab the ledge there, I think, and that jump animation carries him past it instead of uh, snapping to it. And he goes right into the waiting arms of that Hydrant, and so DePaul take game number one, but only by a stock, and uh, we were commenting on it, this is a very back and forth set. A very, very back and forth. And it's interesting because, you know, typically when it comes to sets that are very, very close, it's usually the stereotypical, like, oh, that they're at high percent, no one wants to approach, no one wants to push forward. It's kind of the opposite here. It almost looks as if everyone just wants to end it and just wants to say, okay, just like, we're both at high percent. I'm going to kill you in like less than five seconds. Just watch me. Just watch me. <laughs> it's and, amazing. And, <laughs> no, and it's so it, it's so fun to watch too, especially in a format like this where every single stock matters. I mean, you could tell right there, last stock scenario, dead even, and they were just not afraid to to kind of, you know, box with each other up close. And even though both characters, you know, have those projectiles to try and space away if they so choose. That being said, we'll be, looks like we'll be hopping right into game number two. Character swap on the side of Rograt. Instead of Greninja, he opts for the Game & Watch against ADR's Pac-Man. A Game & Watch? I'm curious to know what counterplay we'll see here from the Game & Watch. Have you seen it before? I don't think I've seen Rograt's Game & Watch before, but there we've seen a few Game & Watches here and there in this league. I think the number one thing I'd be looking for is uh, Rograt's use of the, the bucket, considering all of the projectiles that, that Pac-Man has. But that being said, the quick string there from ADR, he, he, he has got those bread and butter combos down of just nair forward air and things of that nature, but still pretty even here in game number two. All right, it's, it, it's interesting. I think when it comes to Triplats, Game Watch has the advantage of being able to um because of the up of course. Um, Pac-Man, on the other hand, uh, I think certain projectiles to work uh, watch out for on Triplats. Um, the Bell, for sure, that covers side plats very well, that covers the edge. Um, but also, I think a lot of the more diagonal type of fruits, like Apple or uh, even like the key to a certain extent can cover a lot of uh, space. So I'm curious to know how Ragrat will adapt. That said, the F smash from mid stage, killing at, what was that, like 90, 80? Something around there. And I mean, we've seen ADR land a couple of those forward smashes just by catching Rograt's landings, but that up smash gonna be able to answer right back and 28% can be made up very quickly. Yeah, great up smash. All right. Oh, that wasn't. <laughs> it, it looks confusing looking at to that. The, the bucket on the orange. It looks kind of funky when he reflects it, it back. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't look right because you're so used to the bucket absorbing projectiles, but it cannot absorb a lot of uh, Pac-Man's projectiles, so it just reflects them instead. Uh, that being said, Rograt eating so much percent here. He's got to be very careful. Game and watch a very light character and again ADR has has been able to find some of these stray forward smashes to connect on stocks but he got the weak hitbox there and you can tell he's just trying to hunt for this kill off of that forward smash yeah oh and speaking of hunting kills we got that down smash move from ADR that was interesting I, I didn't know the down smash had that type of speed to it um yeah and now it's just two stocks to one we really hadn't seen ADR throw out that down smash all game. Good catch there. And he's going to be able to follow up. No, he couldn't. Just barely missing it. ADR, I believe, got the tech, which didn't allow for the follow-up nair from Rograt. Now Rograt sitting at 81. He's going to get F smash for it again. And ADR answers right back, taking this one in a two-stock. Yeah, that was a really funny ending there. I think I saw, what, like, four or five F-Smashes that you were talking about earlier. 
Um, yeah, it was like F smash, F smash. Okay, Nair, roll, F smash. And I mean, I, I was saying this, ADR, his his spacing was was, you know, very well played. And I think just at the end of the day, really the difference maker, I don't know if uh, you saw this as as well, but just the the amount of times ADR kind of found Rograt landing, right? Just, you know, after, uh, after Rograt was in the corner, he would, you know, usually do something like recover high and then maybe air dodge back to stage or something. But in general, ADR was, was catching a lot of Rograt's landings, and especially with that F smash. Yeah, definitely with that F smash. That's become quite a staple move, to say the least. Um, 